Hello everyone, my name is Yi. I'm a software engineer on the Android Studio team. I'll be talking about how to troubleshoot performance issues with Android Studio using a tool called System Trace. First, I'm going to give you a quick overview of what Android System Trace is. Then, I'll go over what the tool looks like in Android Studio, followed by a demo using the tool to investigate a performance issue. Your first reaction to your app being slow is to investigate your app's code, but that's not everything at play while it's executing. First of all, there's the Android framework. Then there's the Linux kernel. And finally, the mobile phone hardware. System Trace helps developers like you get the full picture of their app's runtime performance by capturing performance data from all four layers. From the hardware layer, data like CPU frequency and CPU core scheduling. From the kernel layer, thread state information, RSS memory counters, and more. From the Android framework layer, events from Activity Manager, the graphics pipeline, and other aspects of the framework. You can optionally define custom events to instrument your app code to tie app functionality with the rest of all the data. So, in a nutshell, System Trace is a tool that allows you to inspect how your app interacts with system resources. While you can use System Trace from the command line, Android Studio CPU Profiler started supporting System Trace in 3.2, and we've been making improvements since then. In 4.0, we revamped the System Trace UI based on your feedback. For instance, before 4.0, you can only see trace events from one thread at a time, so we changed that. We continue to polish it in 4.1. This is what it looks like now. On the top left corner, where you can see a line chart of the app's CPU usage, there's a timeline for the trace duration. By selecting a range, you can zoom in and change what's displayed below. The main section of the trace UI shows data from the selected range above and includes multiple sections. Here, I just want to highlight the thread section. As you can see, now you'll be able to view trace events from all threads at once, allowing you to identify busy threads from a glance. Then on the right-hand side, we added a new analysis panel. By default, it performs analysis on all threads, as shown in the screenshot. But once you select something on the left-hand side, the content will change. There are different tabs in this panel, namely top-down tree, flame chart, and bottom-up tree. In Android Studio 4.1, we added a new summary tab to show you additional useful data. OK, now it's time for a demo. I'm going to first show you how to capture a system trace. Then I'll walk you through the new UI while I investigate a UI performance issue, also known as Jank. Here I'm running a sample app called IOSCED, the official app for showing Google I.O. and Android Dev Summit schedules. The project is open source, and the link will be included in the video description. For the purpose of this demo, I had planted a performance bug in the app. When navigating from the conference session list to the session detail view, there is noticeable UI jank. Let's see if we can find out what's causing it using System Trace in Android Studio. Here, I'm running Android Studio 4.1 Beta 3. While the new System Trace UI is already available in 4.0, it received some UI improvements in 4.1, so I highly encourage you to try it out. To capture a System Trace, we first need to start Profilers. Let's click into the CPU Profiler. In the Recording panel, make sure we select the Trace System Calls option and click the Record button. Then, in the app, let me tap on an item in the session list to load the session details. Then we go back to Android Studio and click Stop. By the way, we've made some performance improvements when it comes to parsing the trace. It should now consume much, much less memory. OK, now we have the new trace UI in front of us. The timeline here shows the duration of the trace, which is about 10 seconds. The very first thing we want to do is locate on this timeline when the jank happened. Usually, the interaction section is a good place to start. This dot here indicates a touch event, which is when we tapped on the session item. 
Then in the lifecycle track, we have an event showing when the main activity transitioned from schedule fragment to session detail fragment. So the jack we're investigating must have happened between the touch event and the fragment transition. Now we can use the range selector on the top to quickly zoom in and then use WSD keyboard shortcut to center the area of interest. Another way to zoom in is box selection, one of the UI improvements we made in Android Studio 4.1. By just dragging a box around the area and press the zoom to selection button or keyboard shortcut M, we can precisely center the view to the area of interest. Since we're investigating UI performance, the display section might be helpful to us. This section shows us data related to the Android graphics pipeline. On the first track, we have frames data. This chart shows exactly how long it takes to render each frame. For smooth UI rendering, we want to aim for 60 frames per second, which translates to 16.7 milliseconds per frame. This tool colors frames longer than that threshold red to help you easily locate long frames. The next track added in Android Studio 4.1 is called Surface Flinger. Surface Flinger is a process running in the background on Android operating system. It is responsible for processing buffers and sending them to the display. Surface Flinger only wakes up to accept buffers between display refreshes to minimize memory usage and avoid screen tearing. So having these events on the timeline will help you discover potential UI rendering bottlenecks in your app. The third track, also added in 4.1, is called vSync. vSync is a synchronization signal. It synchronizes your app, Surface Flinger, and the hardware refresh cycles so that users don't see screen stuttering. In a perfect world, you want your app to render a frame before each vSync to, to ensure smooth graphics. Here we can see these long frames missed several vSyncs, and we're going to dig deeper. By the way, there's actually more graphics data than what's shown here. We have a tool that specializes in graphics profiling and it even exposes GPU data. It's called Android Graphics Inspector and is currently in developer preview. I'll include a link in the video description for those interested. So we have several uh, slow frames here. To find out more, let's move on to the thread section. By the way, you can reorganize sections by moving them up or down, or even collapse them to hide individual sections. As I said earlier, the new UI shows all thread activities at once, making it easier to find the busy threads. By default, they are sorted by the number of events inside each thread, but you can always drag and drop to reorder them however you like. Within each thread, there are two parts. The top part shows thread states at any given time, whether it's running or sleeping. This is useful for debugging multi-threaded issues. The bottom part shows all trace events in a tree-like graph. By default, you get trace events from the Android framework layer, already instrumented by the team behind the Android OS. You may also see custom events if you instrument your app's code using the Android tracing API, which I'll show you in a second. Here, let's dig deeper into this long frame. Something stood out. This res drawable android banner.png event indicates an image was being loaded during this frame. It took about 50-ish milliseconds, which contributed to the slow frame. This is actually the bug I had planted in the code. I replaced a vector image with a 4000 by 1000 PNG image. This would have been hard to detect by just looking at your app code. However, System Trace exposes instrumented events from the framework layer, giving us data on how long loading a large image takes. There's something else I want to explore. Between these two frames, there's a large gap. Let's zoom in to see what's going on. Here we can see a couple of events called inflate. Inflate is a trace event for constructing a view hierarchy from pre-processed XML via layout inflator. This includes constructing all of the view objects in the hierarchy and applying styled attributes. This event is actually very common during UI initialization. In fact, 
We can select this event to see all of their occurrences in the analysis panel. Notice the panel changes its content to reflect the currently selected event instead of all threads. In Android Studio 4.1, we added a new summary tab to show you a high-level summary of your selected object. For instance, when we select the trace event, the summary tab shows all occurrences of that event. In addition to basic statistics, you can find and navigate other instances of this event in this table. I also want to mention that charts like the top-down tree now scope data to the selected event, making it easier to see data you are interested in. So I want to make sense of these uh, inflate events. I know session detail fragment does a lot of view, in, uh, view inflation, but what I want to do is correlate my app code with these inflate events from system trace. To do that, I can add custom events with the Android Tracing API. The API provides two methods, begin section and end section. Here, I have a call to inflate speaker shared enter. So let me wrap that with the Tracing API. The string parameter here for begin section is the name that is going to show up in the Trace UI. OK, there are more inflate calls in this method. So let me add more trace API calls. Now I can run profiler again. and take another system trace. OK, similarly, I want to locate the area of interest here. And if we zoom in into this gap, you can see now we have three new events, which are the three custom events I added. Speaker shared enter, app theme detail, and session detail menu. With these custom events, now I can correlate what my code is doing with these instrumentation code from the Android framework. In fact, this session detail menu event could be another source of UI junk. Not all of these menu items are visible, but they are taking time to inflate the layout. If we look at the top-down tree view, we can get an aggregated view of the exact timing of these trace events. We can probably I'll optimize some of these. There's one more thing I want to show. I know some of you are concerned about your app startup performance. You can actually take system trace during app startup. To do that, just go to run configurations, switch to the profiling app, and check this checkbox. Start this recording on startup. Here, you can select the type of recording you want to take. In addition to system trace, you can also record sample Java methods. Then, the next time you profile your app, it will automatically start system trace on startup so you don't miss anything during app startup. Hopefully, this demo can help you become comfortable with using system trace in Android Studio. I know troubleshooting performance issues is a difficult task, so I hope these tools can make your lives a bit easier. Here's a quick summary of what we talked about today. System Trace helps you investigate performance issues by showing you how your app interacts with system resources. Use custom events to correlate your app's code with system events and easily visualize them in a trace report. With Android Studio, you can iterate this process faster. Finally, try out the latest Android Studio beta and send us your feedback. We really value your input and will improve our tools based on your feedback. Thank you.